So I decided to make a quick video as I'm working on this Bronco because there's something that I found out the hard way and I can go ahead and explain to other Bronco owners or installers why you need to do something or you could cause damage to your new audio equipment. Okay, so what is it that I'm talking about and I'm probably just totally overhyping and, you know, trying to scare you. No, what I'm talking about is load resistors. These are load resistors made by Audio Control. I'm not sure if anybody else makes load resistors. I just know Audio Control is who I always go to. They got blues, they got the greens, and they got the grays, which are different impedances. Now, the reason for load resistors, that's kind of a different story here. So, instead of getting super technical and, and into it to where you'll be like, I'm, I've lost it, this doesn't make sense, or I don't want to understand that, an easy way to think of it is this, um, like an older vehicle with an alternator. If you have an alternator and you do not hook it up to the battery, if you test the output of the alternator, you could get 20, 30 volts. Now, we all know your car runs on 12. So an alternator should show 14 volts. Well, without that 12 volt reference, without that battery hooked up to the alternator, it just spins wide open. It doesn't know where to stop. It doesn't know where it's supposed to be charging because it does not have that 12 volt battery telling it it's in a 12 volt system. So it will ramp up its voltage up to 20, 25, 30 volts, which is crazy and a lot of people will freak out, but it's because it does not understand. It needs that 12 volt reference. So why talk about an alternator like that? Because amplifiers can do the same thing, mainly class D amplifiers. So when you have a class D amplifier, some of them, and this is what's crazy about our industry is you just don't know. It gets to a point where you kind of just do it on every car because you don't know if the car has this problem or not. Kind of like the active noise canceling. It's just a, a hit or miss thing and just to be safe, you go ahead and do it. But I found out the hard way on the Bronco. So just like the alternator, it needs to see that battery. The amplifier needs to see the impedance or the resistance of the speaker. If you unhook the factory speakers from the factory amplifier and you put in a new amplifier like I am here, then the factory amplifier no longer sees the load of those speakers and will begin ramping up and shooting crazy amounts of voltage through its outputs. Now, the problem with that is if we're using the outputs of the factory amp as a high level, like we are here to go into our new amp because say there's no interface, there's no you know, you gotta go high level in and you, there's just nothing made for your vehicle. Like on these Broncos, we use T harnesses. I'm going high level in. I can be shooting, you know, 30, 40, 50 volts into this high level input, which can damage the amplifier. So what you have to do is put in a load resistor, which is these. And these show the load back to the factory amplifier. So in essence, the factory amp in the radio or external amp, doesn't matter, thinks that these are the speakers and thinks it's still hooked up to speakers, stabilizing it so that it doesn't ramp up the crazy voltage. That's what these are for. I know there's crazy noise going on in the background. That's because we're expanding and getting a bigger building and I'm having concrete done. But I really wanted to make this video because I had this set up like, you know, I'm doing this install right now and it was a good time to talk about it. Now these load resistors come in different colors. Uh, audio control has a gray, blue, and green. And the reason for that is they have different impedances. Some vehicles wanna see 20 ohms, some vehicles wanna see a higher impedance, and you just kinda of have to figure it out. You need to investigate, go on audio control, they have a lot of information. They'll, try, they'll tell you, you know, what the vehicle needs. Now why do I need this on the Bronco and how did I find out? Well, that's a funny story and not a fun one. And here we have the amp installed. The installation's complete. So here we have the four channel audio control amplifier. These are the outputs coming from the factory radio from the T harness. They go into the load resistors, out of the load resistor, into the high level inputs of the amplifier. And then these are feeding out to the speakers. Um, in these vehicles, I always run my own speaker wire to the kicks and the dash because it's just so easy to do that way you can leave the main harnesses intact in case somebody ever wanted to take this out 
without pulling out the T-harness, they could just plug the factory speakers back into the actual factory plugs and everything would work as usual. But that is how you have to set up the 22s. Um, the reason for it is there's a couple things I've heard, but one of them I believe to be is this. So I've had a few other shops, a few other installers say that that's incorrect and that you don't need load resistors. Uh, the fact that Audio Control actually confirmed this and it was part of their training for Knowledge Fest actually have a spreadsheet with photos showing what load resistors need to be used with the BNO or the non-BNO system kind of proves that they do need load resistors. The 21s didn't though, but the 21 and the 22 is the exact same vehicle. So why does one need load resistors and one doesn't? Well, from what I've been told, so this could be folklore, but what from, I've been told from higher ups in the Ford community and industry is basically the Ford Bronco had so many orders that needed to be filled that when the 22s were supposed to be shipped out, people started getting upset because the wait was taking too long because of the chip shortage and because of everything you couldn't get a hold of. So people started canceling their 2022 Bronco orders. So to save that, what Ford did was did you ever hear about the 40,000 F-150s that are sitting on a lot that aren't being sold? They took the sync modules that were for the Ford F-150 and they put them in the Bronco, which the F-150, 21 and up, you have to put load resistors on because they were using that style of Class D amplifier. By taking the F-150's module and putting it in the 22 Bronco so they could fill the orders, it essentially is the same vehicle. But that one little thing, which would only affect an installer or audio, is different. And that's why you got to have load resistors in the 22s. So I hope that helps somebody out. I hope that kind of explains it in kind of a layman's terms. I'm Cape Sipes, Custom Audio Reimagined. Take it easy.